All right. Happy was it? It's Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. So I'm going to say it for a second and let some people come in. Da 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 da. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hello, hello, hello. Lala, this thing kind of follows me around. I borrowed it from my mother. So, as we get this room filled up a little bit, okay, because tonight we're going to talk about some stuff, and we're going to get a little deep with it. So, hopefully you have a quiet place you are, the quieter the better, the more you can tune in. What I mean by tune in is just clear your mind. Have no thoughts. You know, um, try to be silent here. So what we're going to talk about tonight, patterns, cycles, and identification. Because this is what we're all dealing with on a regular basis. So we've got a few coming in. I'm going to play a little drum for you. So, what we're going to talk, it's kind of complicated, okay? What we're going to talk about tonight is a pretty big topic. There's going to be probably some generalization going on in it. Because I'm not really, you know, there's not really a lot of answers to be given. There's just ways of looking at things that take you in a different direction. Right? I mean, inevitably, there is no answer to why anyone's alive, not even. Not that the mind's going to conjure up and it's going to make your life better. It's just not going to happen. All right, so what's going to make the life better? Well, this is. Not just this. I mean, this is doing its thing, right? 
But the rest of this is pretty important. Right, there's cells all through this body, right? And they're all in part of this energetic pattern. They just kind of come together, coalesce, and that's you. But it's not just you physically, right? It's not like, okay, that's me. No, no, there's, those things are as multidimensional as you know yourself to be, right? So they respond to emotional stuff. They respond to mental stuff. Anytime there's a distortion, it goes through the whole being. Right, and then it turns these, puts blocks in these energy centers, then they can't move anymore. Right, then you get stuck in this pattern, you get stuck in these cycles. Right, and so it, as we want to, you know, I'm hoping that what everybody wants is to illuminate the consciousness, be okay with the mystery, have you know, uh a lot of power when it comes to self. And I don't mean power to, to go take the world over. I mean the power to get this back in line, right? There's certain cycles we know that aren't good for us. There's certain ones that aren't. You know, and within the cycles, there's downturns and upswings, downturns and upswings, right? And that's where I really want to start, is in the downturns, upswings, the big the cycles we go through. Um, as some of you know, um, I spent two years with Carlos Castaneda um, back in the 90s. And he would take me over to this woman's house. I won't say names. I'll just say Mary. And I had to go there pretty much every day for six months. And, and I never wanted to go there. It was dark. It was dreary. And then every so often it would be cheery and light. You know, but I never knew when it was going to be what. Because this woman could go from being absolutely wonderful and lovely and bake you cookies and here, have my car, you know, just giving everything away. And then the other end of the spectrum is driving her car up on my front porch and trying to bust my door down, uh, throwing a bottle at someone at a bar, going just completely sideways. Right? And she was both. Right? And she really wanted to develop. I mean, you would hear it in her voice every day. I need to da 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 da. I got a da 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 da. But what I never noticed that Carlos was always pointing it out. You know, I'd be like, "Okay, where are we going today?" He's like, "Well, let's just head towards Cripple Creek." And I was like, "Oh, geez." And inevitably, we'd end up at Mary's. And before he'd get out of the car, he would say, "No, it's day four. It's day four. It's day four. She's gonna. She'll be all right today." And we'll walk in the house, and she's fine. Right, and other days he's like, you, you, you all right? You, you feeling strong? Because it's day seven. And we would go in there and it would be absolute chaos. She would be throwing dishes around the house. I mean, it was nuts. And I, you know, I'm just kind of going along with it because, you know, uh, Carlos was a dear friend of mine, you know, which means teacher. Um, you know, as far as apprenticeship goes, it's basically you're spending time with them. It's a friendship. Is really what it is. It's a connection between the two people. It's not, you know, some regiment you go do. It's in your daily life. But anyway, he would he would always drop these hints about all of this going on, right? And then one day it came to a huge head, a huge, 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 oh my God, just chaos, beyond chaos in her house. To where I had to rescue him from the house and go driving down the street as she's throwing stuff at us as we're driving away. And it was that day we pulled over. He, she had hit him with the lead crystal ashtray, was beating him on the head with a cast iron skillet. And he, I just pulled over because I wanted to make sure he was okay after we got away from her house. And he looked over at me and he said, why do people have to behave that way? And he gave me this look that made me just totally look at the six months I'd been going there. And it, what occurred to me was this pattern opened up in front of me. And I can completely see how she is and how it starts and how it goes through it and how she ends up being a monster and then having to expunge that by being this people pleaser back to monster, back to people pleaser, back and forth. Right. So as we want to do a spiritual path, I mean, so spirit, what does that even mean? OK, so if you're on a spiritual path, there's no room for your identity anymore. Right? Being on a spiritual path as long as spirit in, which really is the provider of life, the maker of life, is it not? 
right? To let that in and guide you. It's not some God that everybody's praying to let that guide you. No, the one in here, the life force within yourself, right? So the spiritual life is really making the way you feel important. Right, making where your consciousness is at, what it's drawing from important. Right, what you're focusing on, what you're associating with. Right, Not, nothing to disturb this balance that you have inside. Which, sorry, everybody's kind of out of that balance, aren't they? I mean, if they're really honest with themselves, everybody's spinning a little bit, at least, if not a, a whole lot. Right, so. When we get into this spiritual life, we have to figure out how we put the brakes on it, where the distortions are, where the disturbances are, right? You know, and a cup of ayahuasca can show you that pretty quick. Boom, and you see it, right? But what you're seeing is a pattern. What you're seeing is a cycle. Nothing but you breaks those. Nothing. You know, so the plant medicines, they'll show you these cycles. This is, this is what you're involved in. It'll show you the downturn and the upswing, the downturn and the upswing, right? And, I mean, after working with them for a very long time, you get into the subtleties of what they're trying to show you. And that they're showing, trying to show you how to break this pattern, break this cycle that you get stuck in, right? So... The minute we need an identity or we need to identify with something in the past or something terrifying, terrible that happened to us, right? There's an association there, right? You can get stuck in the cycle of being a victim and then just being um, manic as can be, being a victim, being as manic as can be, and it just cycles back around. There's no stopping this, just stopping it cold. That's never going to work. You got to work through this. Right, so you have to be present for every step of the cycle that you're going to be going through, the ups and the downs. It, 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 by the way, if you, if you have a question about this at all, um, just put it in the messages. Tom's sitting over here. He can feel the questions, and you know, as they come up, I'll answer them, because I don't, I'm not trying to confuse you. This is kind of very important, actually, especially if you're going to make progress and have some light in you, some fortitude, some you know, tenacity and grit, right? So we have to start paying attention to those cycles. We have to start paying attention to what we're associating with inside of them. And then we have to see where the momentum is. Because there are people, so there's kind of a few ways you can see this, okay? There's people that when they're in the downswing, all the energy's there. And when they're in the upswing, they forget any of that ever happened, only to arrive in it again and go through this kind of masking it, masking it, masking it, and then doing this, okay? So it's just a stuck pattern. That's not going anywhere. That's not going to evolve. That consciousness is stuck in the state of consciousness that that pattern is happening in, and there is no escaping it until the pattern's broken. Then you can go up in a higher state because it's the patterns that hold you. It's the cycles in the lower states that are holding you, right? So when you're on a downturn, you are supposed to go all the way through it as consciously as possible without thinking anything until you come out of it. After you come out of it, what you went through is crystallized. Now, when that gets crystallized, you're going to feel a rush of a cleansing, like you feel clean somehow. It, it usually comes through a very dark night of soul at the end of the downswing, and then out of that, it comes you again. When you're there, the trick is, is to build momentum in the upswing. And the way you do that is you're always paying attention to that. This cycle is going to come back around to that again at some point. Right? So if you know that's going to happen, you don't try to fool yourself and thinking this is the last time I remember doing this. Because that's just pure bullshit. You're going to do it again. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. So some people, right, there's no development on the upswing. And then all the emphasis is on the downswing, which creates a huge abyss. 
right? There's no focus here. There's no intention here. There's no consciousness on this side. But on that downswing, boom, it just takes them and throws them on the floor. They feel emotionally, really emotionally distorted, mentally confused, energetically tired, body meh. And that is not the way we were intended to live, right? So the trick is, is to build momentum on the upswing, but to let no, just to let whatever that dark downswing is, to just be what it's always been. Don't try to alter it in it. Don't try to play with anything while you're in it. Just let it be what it's always been and carry some of your clarity you've gained from the upswing into it. And then as you come around, you do more of that. Become more aware of your surroundings. More aware of how this pattern is playing out from you feeling good all the way over to where it starts to suck for you. Pay attention to all of this, right? And it builds and builds and builds. So as the cycle is playing out, you're building up a, a, a way of being so aware of what's going on that you actually start to control the energies at play. Right? Because you're tapping into something completely different here than when you're doing this. Right? So when we fall back into those old behaviors, those, that unconscious state, we always want to do something about it then. And then when we feel good, we just want to forget it happened and just play along and pretend like it never, ever happened or is going to happen again. Which, that's wishful thinking you will have your ass handed to you, no doubt, right? So when you're up in those places, like I'm saying, pay attention to how it's going back to the downturn, right? And eventually what ends up happening is the amount of momentum the downturn has, the amount of effect it has lessens, which means you're not spending so much energy just navigating and surviving this, right? So it doesn't have as much impact. You don't act on it. You just let it come through you and up. And then when you're back on, you apply that back on to that. And just keep doing this and keep doing this and keep doing this. And eventually those behaviors that kind of come in, emotional, mental, physical, whatever they may be, there's a multitude of them that are not good for you. So when those come in, you can see them coming in. You may not be able to resist doing it. You may not be that strong yet, but you know they're there and you pay attention to how they're affecting you, where they're taking you, how that feels, right? Then on the upturn, you go, you know what? I don't, I, I realize I got to go through that again at some point. I ain't going through it like that. It makes you pay attention always as you're doing this, you're always referring to where it's going, right? And eventually one day the pattern breaks. Because all the momentum is in when you're conscious and on, right? And then all of the, the down and off is depleted of energy. And once you deplete the down and off of energy, then all you've got is uh, well-being, an upliftment of your consciousness. I mean, they call it enlightenment. But it's the same as there's like... After those patterns are broken, it's like the glass ceiling shatters and you move up, right, into another set of patterns, right? And if we're going to be unconscious in them, then you're stuck where you are forever. You can do ayahuasca till you're blue in the face. You can do all kinds of modalities and therapies and retreats, and it isn't going to do a thing, right? The will of you that knows you're suffering and knows that it's going to really probably forget about it after it's over. That has to be fixated in breaking the pattern of the cycle, which means you're going to have to be a little more present in your daily life. And then when something comes up as a, you have to sit with that. If the minute you put it outside of yourself, um, that's a boomerang. You might get somebody with it, but it's coming right back at you. You're going to pick it up on the downturn. It's going to come right back at you. Right? So we kind of really have to watch the behaviors when we're in a bad place. It's better to do nothing. But that's not productive. Well, you're not here to produce anything other than, you know, more humans. You know, Earth is doing a fine job. 
I mean, we can't outdo that. So, you know, it's, it's not about being productive. It's not about fighting through this. No, it's about being very aware of where, what this all feels like. What, how this confuses you, how this gets emotionally ugly for you, how this starts all kinds of conflict and awkward social situations, how this is the moments in the car where you're just so frustrated you don't know what to do with yourself, or sitting next to your loved one and just, ah! right? Because, you know, as much as, as we can marginalize those experiences, they're crippling to everybody, right? The minute this thing gets out of whack, that's crippling. It's very painful. There's, there's no doubt about it. You know, feeling, not feeling alive, is a, for me, is a, it's a painful experience. Being numb is pain for me. It's like, what, why am I not feeling life carrying me forward? Right? You know, and I've stepped in this many, many times throughout my life. I mean, I've lived cycles for years that, you know, had I actually applied myself, I probably could have broke through them years ago. But that's fine. I'm still young. I can handle that. Right? So how do these patterns get started? These cycles get going in the first place. That's where identity comes in. Identification. Right? So if someone's on a downturn and they're putting all of their consciousness and momentum in feeling this and making stories about it and not feeling through it in a conscious manner, like trying to figure out a way to make it stop, right? The, once we identify as the person in the downswing, the victim, then we're going to multiply that experience while we're there. We're going to multiply the impact past experiences that aren't happening to us now. It will kick all that up. Trauma, 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 kicked up, kicked up, kicked up, kicked up. Right? And then on the upswing, it's, oh, I just, you know, whatever. I'm getting out of that. I'm doing new things. I'm going to paint my walls. I'm going to get a new job. I'm going to go to massage therapist school. But right back to this thing again where there's doubt and there's fear, right? There's distortion. Don't really know what's going on. Things aren't going the way that you're according to, you know, you're, the way you want it to move. And then on the upswing, it's like, oh, everything's back to good again. This is, those can go on infinitely. Infinitely. Right? And the identities are what those things are. They, they're the ones doing it. You're a being. You're this. Before anything happens this way, all of this is you. That's what you actually are. And it's conscious. And it has a will. It has a sense of humor. It knows how to love. It does all the things much better than the mind is doing it. All right? So, the minute you identify with something, the mind races to fortify that, which now you've got this identity you've created, right? And it begins a cycle, right? But it, it's not lofty. It has to be, mm, it usually associates with the downswing. Right? Much more than it does this. It's this part of it. It's really anchored there. Right? So on the upswing, when you think, I'm going to get over this. I got this knock. This is never going to happen again. I'm done with this. I'm done with this. Bam, you're back in it again. Well, when you get back in it again is when you get concerned. When you start to like really get desperate and start moving something. Right? And the mind is encouraging that. It's encouraging all the activity here and all the ignorance here. Ignoring everything here and just feeling good. And then paying attention to ever giving attention to everything here without working it out. Right? And so, you know, when we get to see a pattern like, oh my God, this is what this is what this is what's going on. And this comes around every three months or, you know, whenever, however big that pattern is that you're looking at. You, there's no way for you to just snap it. It's not like that. It's not like an object that you can smash on the floor and be done with it. 
It's not just a concept in your head that you can just let go of and stop thinking about and everything's fine. No, 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 no. The minute the mind and the identity link up, they're on each other's side. And usually they team up against you, the being, the one feeling all of this, right? The one that gets to experience the emotional disturbance, the mental confusion, the fog, the lack of energy, the depression, the anxiety. The mind doesn't experience that, nor does the identity. They can think about it, talk about it, make excuses about it, tell stories about it, but the one feeling it is you inside. That's where it's doing the damage, right? So it's not just about having a concept and this is what I'm going to do. No, it's a pattern. It's an energetic. Your energy is locked in these patterns, locked in these cycles, right? Which is why a lot of people go to plant medicine. They're locked in a cycle. They can't stop it. They take the plant. It de just derails that, spins it out, stretches it out, pulls it apart, explodes it. So they can see what it would be like beyond that pattern beyond that cycle, right? And then usually they're shown either before or after. The, the grossness they're actually involved in on a conscious level, beyond what, you know, you can marginalize here. You can't marginalize your feelings with those plants because they're coming in full force. And there's nothing else you can pay attention to. They're so overwhelming, right? So they're just magnifying what's going on with you. Right, so when you, when you see those, now it's your turn to say, I got this. This is mine. I made this. I made this identity. I made this pattern. I made this cycle. And I made all the, up all the behaviors in it that I use to buffer myself here and just get my kicks here. Right? So that's rammed into the energy field. Right? So it's like, oh, I don't feel good. I I don't feel good. It's like, yeah, you got your energy all messed up. So, of course, you're going to feel that in here. I feel sick. Yeah, because when your energy is messed up, that's what it feels like. When, you, when you're in a, in a pattern that's unhealthy, when you're in a cycle that you can't break, that just makes you a psycho, you know, you're going to, it makes you eat things you shouldn't, do things you ought not to, and then you get to feel all the shame and guilt of all, I mean, all that. That's killing everything. It's, it's downright killing them, you know, driving them mad, right? Because they're not really home. Too much of their life force is embedded in these identities. And if anybody's going to be honest, you don't have just one. You don't. You have many. Depending on who you're with, depending on where you are, a different identity comes out to play. But you have to understand that if the more of these you make, they don't just come when you need them and they go away. They need to constantly be fed like a pet. If you want it to go play fetch or, you know, go be your guard dog, whatever you want that identity to do, you have to feed it. And when you have a multitude of them, you know, there's, you know, the me, the healer, me, the, the guy, the person doesn't feel so good. And, and then, you know, goes in. There's just so many. Right? It's like, you know, you watch somebody be like this epic spiritual being one night, and then you see him treating a woman like crap in a bar the next, half drunk. Are they, is that the same identity? Right? And there's, everyone's doing this to some degree. Right? So the more of them you have, <laughs> right? Just imagine this, okay? So each one of them is its own cycle. So you have 10 different identities that you're really unconscious of because they just light up and you're just doing it while you're doing it and then it's done. And then you forget it and you go on to the other one. But they're all sitting there at the table eating you, your energy. Right? Well, if each one of those is a cycle, now you got 10 of them going on. All at once. Right? And then all of them combining to make one giant one that's like 20 years long. And they just keep stretching out and getting more complicated and more complicated. This is not the spiritual life. Creating new identities. I'm going to change my name to whatever. Americananda, whatever. You know, but I'll change my name. I'll start wearing these clothes. It's like, what are you doing? 
That is not changing the energetic field. That's just putting on a new identity. Anything you're conjuring up as, oh, this is me, duh, that's an identity. You are what's sitting there without talking. You are what's looking out of those eyeballs. Breathing the air. And somehow having a heartbeat. Who knows who's actually doing that? Because that's keeping you alive. So who knows who's doing that? Right? The rest of it's you're making up. So all the cycles, all the traumas that you keep reliving over and over and over and over, you haven't decided to get conscious enough to break those cycles and to realize those cycles are keeping you in a low state of consciousness. Meanwhile, the cosmos and the very planet you are on are going, we're going to shake this shit up and we're going to shift some things. Well, if you don't have any identity, you're just moving with life. If you have an identity that it's all going wrong right there, you just started a new cycle of, you know, I'm going to be a social justice warrior and then just get so angry that no one hears you. That you, I'm going to make this big splash and you realize you are a drop in the ocean. There's no real effect you're going to have on the world. Not a, Not on a social scale. And you were never meant to. You were meant to do this and the inner thing. The outer world is your home. The outer world, there's energies and life in it that crisscross through you as you do through them. That's your identity. The the web of life moving through you and connecting everything, that's you. Everything else, you're making it up. Those are cycles, those are patterns. Those are identifications. I identify with my trauma. I I like healing. I want to heal. I want to heal, heal, heal. Careful, because you might, like, keep re-inviting trauma back in so you can keep healing. So that could be an identity, right? I'm doing my healing work. It's an identity. It's just another... Right? It has to be this, 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 this has to be in command of this, this, this. This is in command of nothing. Right? Problem with identification is, is the minute you're identifying with something, like I said, the mind is fortifying that. And it will not let you touch any information that goes against that identification. So someone's going to, might bring you information about it. That the mind and the identity say, no, 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 no. But if the being's like, yeah, 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 that's the truth, you're coming apart. And you're going to feel attacked. You hurt my feeling. A whole boring emotional distortion. Just so, you know, for me, there's nothing more boring than emotional distortion. Just, meh. There's an, it's so boring. It just ruins everything. Doesn't it? Can't that make the world really pale, heavy? Not, you don't want to be here? Right? So you, you have to deal with this. Just like we all do. I, I, I had to, have to, probably will continue to. Hopefully continue to. Just keep breaking these patterns. Uh, it's weird. It's like, as they break, you feel this kind of up. I mean, I don't know how to explain it. It's like you're more conscious. Right? And you can take all of that development of awareness and will and consciousness and intention, all the development through all these littler cycles into the bigger ones. And the biggest one that we go through is fear of death while we're here. And we're never going to die here which is a complete fallacy. That, that's the one that's really kind of everything else is existing in. The fear of death cycle. It, it, you're really fearing life. 
right? Because as you your consciousness expands through breaking cycles, you get to that one where it's like, oh, death. And you, it, it, it's not that it consumes you. It doesn't consume you. It's something you contemplate. That your life here is a cycle that will end. That's the only cycle you need to be in to really enrich the consciousness, to really empower the presence, to get some courage. Stop being a victim. Daddy did this to me. So, did. Get over it. Stop identifying with that. I'm not trying to be, you know, callous at all. Stop identifying with that person that had that happen to him. We nurture him and bring him up. No, you don't. No, you don't. That's in the past. And the past is energy just randomly going <laughs> if it's if it's affecting you now, you're the one creating a that created a pattern, a cycle that just keeps playing out and out and out and out and out. And out. And you just go unconscious when it hurts. Really focused in it. Really feeling it. Really reacting to it. But not in a conscious way. Not in a way that this is going to end one day. I'm going to end this one day. I, I, this is going to end this one day. So you give more credence and more power and more value to this. And less to I feel like shit. Ah, bleh, and let that go muck. Because the minute your momentum is on the downswing, most of your momentum is here and not on the upswing, this will even be painful. And there won't be anything but just a big slump, a big downswing. It's like, oh, I'm on the upswing. Yeah, it's going to flip over on you. I'm going to flip over on you again. And, uh, no momentum, no um, no way of going forward in that. It's like a gerbil on a habit trail. Every so often there's a piece of cheese. Right, so we have to be able to navigate what's going on in here. You, you can choose not to. The world's going to do what it's going to do to you. But if you really decide that you want this as it was meant to be. Then you can clear out those identities and you can consciously get in there and do it and snap these things open. Get the energy back from this identity that's been feeding on it. That isn't going beyond the grave. It's part of the life cycle. The 80 whatever years. So all the identities you create, they're basically like all the clothes that you've kept all your life. When you die, that shit don't go with you. So I'm working on myself. I'm working on what self are you working on? And how come it needs work? This needs work? <sighs> Drink water, breathe air, eat food. What needs work? Right? Oh, you, what would you conjure up in your head? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cycle, pattern, identity. Cycle, pattern, identity. As I referred to Tom earlier, I said, it's the unholy trinity that we play with every day. Right? Instead of intent, will, and awareness, we do pattern, cycle, identification. And, you know, the world's not a place you really want to, um, <laughs> or at least man's world, it's not really a, a place you want to really <clears throat> connect with as a source of energy right now. It's better to get the source of energy that comes to you naturally, freely, you know, it wakes you up in the morning. We'll get you off your couch, get you out the door. We'll get you into helping people, you know, not being awkward, not needing to hide because you don't feel good. Right? To be able to just do what you got to do. Don't let this invade your all of your life. Right? So 
there's no formula to do this. Just you have to be present. You have to see your behavior as it plays out. You have to I really be honest about how it's what it's doing to this. Not what people think about it. Because that's irrelevant to how this feels. You know, you go, oh, do you agree with me? Yes. Oh, that's so great. That doesn't change anything in here. It just makes this thing go, wee, I'm good. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people come up to me like, it's very weird. I'm like, what's that? Well, everybody comes to me advice and says, you know, looks at me like, man, you've got yourself so well put together. You've got no problems. I need some advice. And I, I just look at them like awkwardly because I'm a goddamn train wreck. And, and they don't see it. They see me as someone who's actually on the up and up. They said, yeah, yeah. Cycles like to bump up against cycles. Identities like to boing, 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 boing. That's just what they do. Because the energy they're getting, right, they, if you're going to give it more, it's like being in a potluck. <laughs> Right, so the identity is sitting at the table eating your food. Oh, you're bringing some too. Shit, I'll have some of that. Oh, no, 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 no. You know, so it's kind of strange. You know, it's like well, I need to go ask someone advice. Yeah, yeah. An identity always needs to do that. It needs to look for advice. It needs to go bounce things off people. But it never realizes that sometimes the people it's bouncing that off of to try to get some understanding. Uh, aren't in a good place themselves. You might not see it. Just like the guy that everybody, you know, were like, man, you're so well put together. They didn't see his either. But, you know, if you if that person is not going to say, hey, look, I'm a mess too, don't ask me. But if they're going to go, oh, no, I, I can help you. Let me give you some advice. It's only going to take you to where they're at, <laughs> which could be messier than where you are. Right. So this is not work that you involve anybody with. You don't go around, hey, this, is, this was my day. Oh, this is my day. I'm feeling on top of the world. No, 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 no. Don't display the emotional distortions to anyone. Right? You be, you be what you genuinely are feeling. Yeah, some people don't like it. Some people don't have to be, you need to speak. You just need to feel better. You just, come on, just just forget about it. And others might go, hmm, there's something going on here. Right? So you never know who it's going to be. So you can't like go, well, what about this person? No, 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 no. no. What about you? Now, you really want to be something for someone else? Well, you have to start with yourself first. Because if you try to do that without breaking a cycle that has a whole lot of darkness in it, eventually, yeah, you meet them on the upswing, everything's good, you get to the downturn, you most likely might abuse that person that you say you love. Huh. So, you know, you know it's like, be a little more, um, hmm, what's the word I'm looking for that's going to really fit? Be a little more uh, astute in, in what you're doing, in what you're saying, in what you're actually feeling. Right? Pay attention to what you eat, how it makes you feel. Do I need more water? Mm, I feel achy. I think I'm getting sick. Or you just might need to drink some water. Right? So... You're kind of like turning off this machine that just marches through the cycle, doing the patterning. I have program, I will play it out. No one home. Right? Stop that thing and just, you kind of intuit what is needed. It's weird. I guess I would say that. It's not like you hear it. It's not like it's coming from outside of you. It's almost as if the different aspects of yourself, body, mind, soul, whatever, you know, whatever those are, they start to like communicate within you. It's not like you're watching the communication between two things. 
It's not like you're one thing and it's another. You just feel this kind of cohesion going on, right? And then it's like the whole being comes to an agreement as to what is needed. So you, the one experiencing it all, can, you know, do that in a way that has, you know, some loveliness to it, some joy to it. You know, some ability to not be afraid of what's going on. It, 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 it's, it's, it's children screwing around. That's what the whole thing is. I mean, the society, all of them across the world, there's, none of them are different. Not anymore. You know, anywhere you go, everybody wants money. Everybody wants to buy the new latest thing. They want a nice house, a nice car. It's, it's the same. Right? And in there's just nothing really there for this. It's all there for the manufactured identity, the one that has desire, right? Because the being doesn't desire anything other than the connection to spirit. But if the identities are taking all that energy for themselves, it, the only thing it's going to have is desire for more and more and more and more and more. Because this is self-generating, as far as we can tell. This all of what you need, other than, you know, you need to put food, water, and air in there, obviously. But this stays alive on its own. You could shut up and say not another word the rest of your life. Eat well, get some exercise, and sleep well. This will be great. On its own. Does it need anything? other than what it knows it needs. Food, air, water. Well, what about love? Uh, that's, as far as I know, uh, I think of that, uh, it's, it's, uh, the gift of being is love. But you, it, it, this is it, basically. It's just not being handled correctly. It's consciousness, really. I mean, how would you, what else would you call it? It's like something in this vast universe that whatever created all of it was so gracious and so considering that it made a you. It just went, hey, here, here, here you go. Well, that's love to me, life. It's, it's the gift of being. Right? And, and what do you do with that gift? Turn it into the tragedy of being? Right? Well, this person did this to me, yeah. Did. Don't be associated with that. Look at it. Gain the wisdom you can from it. Discard it. Keep the wisdom. Carry it into the next experience. Chances are that's not going to happen again. But if you identify with weakness, victimhood, your depression, if you're so concerned about anxiety, well, yeah, I mean, you're going to identify with all. That's what you're doing. That's what's causing all of that energy to feel, oh, yeah, I feel so much anxiety. It's like, right, because you're playing the victim role. You're playing the I can't figure this out, I'm hopeless role. Well, that's what that feels like because, you know, those identities, wow, they got to think a lot. They got to look at outside situations and, and feel victimized by it. They got to find someone to blame all the time. It's a busy, that's a busy identity, so that needs a ton of energy to keep going. Which is what you're going to feel, right? I mean, the minute it's off and running with all your life force, yeah, you're going to feel anxiety because at a certain point, if the life force doesn't get back in here, you're going to die. While, you know, the mind and the... Just pulling you outside of yourself and creating these identities all around you. There should be one being in you. That's it. There shouldn't be two, ten, twelve. There shouldn't be a thousand identities running around that makes you, you'll go mad. And eventually you will. Especially if you keep playing these cycles where I'm a great guy, I'm, I'm really good. And then just be this asshole. And then just, you know, make excuses for it and then be the good guy and just keep playing this. You, you go mad in the downswing. Eventually there's nothing but downswing. You're just going to go mad. There's no way around it. That's identities are infinitely sucking energy and going nowhere. Eventually, that's going to drive you mad. I know a, a drive across Kansas can make someone go mad. 500 miles of, whoa, nothing, flat, straight. Uh, 
imagine, you know, life like that. You know, just never, never again being able to have your sanity back. Because you're screwed around in all the cycles. You're seeking advantage, right? Playing emotional distortions so you can get rid of a certain feeling. Right? Looking for someone to blame because it's too embarrassing to think you're doing this to yourself. But you are. Right there. This, 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 this. That's you. Drop the rest. Drop it, drop it, drop it. You'll see the cycle, not the story, not the identity in it. You'll see what's happening. You'll see how you go into these, nah, 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 how that's happening. Because there's no, there's no progress. You're not progressing. The spiritual path is one of progression. Right? Because, you know, okay, so let's just say spirit is complete consciousness in such a way that it creates space and it creates all this form and matter in it. Right? So you're moving up in that state of consciousness. I mean, I don't know what, what that experience is like living in a place like that high state of consciousness that created the universe. But that's the trajectory of the human life. The animals, I mean, we're living like they are in a lot of ways. Even in the way we deal with things, it's very animalistic. We haven't really turned on the human capacities yet. But we have not mastered them enough to know that, oh, wait a minute. If we master the, 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 the extra things a human being has over the rest of the animals on the planet, we actually work with that and pay attention to that. And really, you know, start paying attention to this, what's looking through the eyeballs. You start to see that the yes consciousness actually develops and you become in higher and higher states of consciousness, right? Which illuminates the world in a much different way, right? And then you start to like no longer have any activity in the lower states at all. Right, so you rise up. There's cycles there too. And you can get stuck in those and stay there. Right? And maybe you find one that works for you and you like it. There, no problem sitting there if you like it. If it's causing joy and well being and energetic presence and an ability to get up every morning and be thankful for your life and not complain about it. Yeah, they're doing this and this person's doing that. Ding, 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 ding. Maybe you can just not do it. Because your state of consciousness is so wonderful for you, you can keep it balanced and joyful. Then, yeah, live there until it no longer is. Play that cycle as long, milk it for all it's worth. But the minute you start seeing this kind of decay come into it, don't try to fix that. Let it decay. You're in an infinite universe. You've got an infinite amount of time. Inevitably, you do. I mean, you don't hear, but inevitably, you do. I mean, there's time for everything. It doesn't have to be now. Oh, but I want this to stay. Why? I mean, just let it go away for a while. I'll come back. I mean, I look at some of the joyful experiences I have where I always wanted them to stay or recreate them. The minute I let them go, I was, well, you know, that's obviously not going to work. So just let it go and keep doing work. Keep getting more aware, more conscious of what's going on in here. What's going on in the mind? What's going on in the body? What's going on in the emotional field? What's going on in the energetic field? Pay real close attention. And every time I would let one of those go, something that resembled that would come in, but it would be much bigger and much wider and much more expansive. And there would be more in there than there was previously. Right? So I don't try to hold on to any state at all because I'm trying to go with life itself spiritual life which isn't about identity at all it's not about what you think at all it's not about what anyone else thinks at all it's not about having a goal-oriented life at all it's not about what society is doing at all 
spiritual life is shedding identities. Retreating the energy those identities consume, bringing them back into some position you call yourself, oneness in here, that empowers this to basically really, really, really have the integrity of a connection to what is made it, making it, will continue to make it for infinity. And having absolute integrity and value on that alone. Not manufacturing some identities to get what you want. Spirit will provide what it needs through you. You have nothing to do with that in a spiritual life. Nothing. I'm participating. I'm co-creating with God. No. No. No, 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 no. That's an identity. Be none of those things. Spend no energy on your opinions and ideas. Of me. Or well, who's doing what? Pay attention to what's in here. Get this straight. And then look at the world. Because if this ain't straight, then your perception of what's out there isn't going to be valid at all. And you're going to find that out in the future experiences that are going to crush your skull, possibly kill you. Uh, it, it's that serious. Or make you do something you will regret for the rest of your life. Right? Because once that spiritual connection is severed, all you have is compulsion, desperation obsession with the thing that's going to just make the pain go away. Not the thing that's going to develop your consciousness. Not the thing that's going to lead you on a path of progression in consciousness. It's going to lead you to death. Prematurely and afraid. And this is, you know, it's fun work. It's adventurous. It, you can have a great sense of humor and a great state of irreverence in all of it, which is fine. Me, I mean, I, I'm, um, how would I put it? I'm a little irreverent towards most of everything that goes on on the planet. I find most of it foolish, dumb, childlike. It's, it, it, call a judgment if you want, but. I mean, I just see what, what our society does. I mean, wow, you got people dying and you got people starving and people who can't afford a home. And, oh, we're watching football? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. Oh, it's, oh, let's pay our taxes and be good citizens. Meanwhile, your government has given money to some other government to weaponize some virus. What? What? The other day, the United States Navy's out in the ocean. Playing with bombs cause an earthquake. It's all full of shit. It's it's shit. Oh, Congress did this. Shit. That's what they did. Shit. Right? So I don't it's all full of most of it's foolish to me. There's a whole lot of emotion tied up in all of it. There's a whole lot of anger tied up in all of it. Well, the problem is, all of that is tied up in the person. Right? So the person's the one all bound up in it. The system isn't bound up in it. Society, it's not a living, real thing. It's an idea. It's a way of doing things. But that's all it is. Right? The real life going on is in here. Right? And if you really want to do something about what's out there, well, there's only really one way you're going to do that. Raise your consciousness to where it doesn't exist so you don't have to worry about it anymore. you got to understand something. No one knows anything. When you have a perception of anything you're seeing anybody else do or you think they're doing something, 50% of it might be right. And that's a maybe. Because they're also part of it. And there's a whole lot of dynamics in there you couldn't process if you wanted to. You can't do that. You would need to have the keys to the universe. 
the secret formula for how all this happened and how emotion works and how daily life works and where they've been and who they are. And uh, oh my God, there's no way your brain can process that. Especially your identity and your mind. I mean, they're, they're going to basically leave out any information that doesn't validate what it already believes. That's the problem with identity, right? The mind just validates its beliefs. And you can throw truth at it all day long and it's not going to change anything. Even if they go, oh man, you're right. They're going to go numb and, and not act on it. So there's no point in that. Right? So the real responsibility of a human is not I mean, yeah, help the world. The more you do this work inside and you get this like really lofty, you, you have a whole lot of um, courage to help somebody. You have to worry about being stepped on. You have to worry about being taken advantage of. You just go out and do your thing. You know, and, and then this, when someone asks for something, that is really not uh, kosher. This knows it. And this, if it's straight, goes, no. Not, well, let me think about it. Maybe, you know, because this, when it's really on, is not lonely. At all. It dives into the adventure it is that is itself. The self that, you know, nature put here, right? The spirit and matter created called you. You don't know anything about that. No one does. It's, it's not about having an identity that identifies with it or this mind that knows about it. It's about knowing that you are actually a part of that and connected to it every single day. Not just when you feel like it. It's something you carry with you on the upswings and the downturns. And you pay as much attention to what it wants from you in the upswings. So when it goes into the downturns, it'll show you how to navigate that without creating more crap for you to deal with. Eventually, you overpower that cycle. You break it. You move up. Up. I mean, you know, I guess that's hierarchical. You can't have that. But let's just say that, again, you have life more abundantly than you did yesterday. More than this person, does that matter? No, it never matters. Here, it matters. Having life more abundantly only matters here. Right? So it's up to you to really pay attention to what you're doing. You have children. Look at the cycle you're playing with them. Good dad. Absent dad. Good dad, selfish dad. Dad, dad. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Kids going, uh, I'm confused. My kid's really acting up, but I don't know why. Huh. You don't notice your own cycle. You don't notice you're in a pattern. You don't notice your suffering is self-generated by this identity you're playing with. And now your kid is suffering it, too. And learning how to do it, just like you do. Yeah, I don't know why this is happening. Yeah? I don't know why I feel the way I do. Oh, but this is, you got advice for someone else? You know how someone else should be living? When you don't even know what's going on here? This has got to be fixed. By you. Not the world. This. And what do I mean by fixed? Is it's broken. And you need to admit it. Fully. And not get, oh, I'm broken. And I don't mean that way. You go, whoa, 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 whoa. This thing is not the way I want it to be. Fully. I have moments where it is. But not fully. If you ain't doing 90% awake and alive and feeling great, Maybe 10% of the time not feeling so good. That's great. But if it's the other way around, yeah, that's broken. I mean, you know, it's, you got to give 10% to that shit happening to you. I mean, you're on a planet, right? I mean, asteroids fall out of the sky, right? Buses run red lights. I mean, it's, you know, you gotta, just got to know. The 10% of it's probably not going to be so pleasant. 
because, you know, you feel pain and you might not know what's going on. But, you know, 90% of that should be uh, fairly joyful, fairly exuberant, motivated, clear, concise, uh, having some dignity here, having some integrity in action, integrity with a relationship. Now, I get it, you know, sometimes things slip. Pay attention to that and don't let it ruin everything that you built. Don't let it ruin all your progress and you go back to the bottle or back to the needle or back to the shopping or whatever it is that your delusionary distraction is. Just say, oh, that's, uh, okay, here we go. Right, it builds strength. It builds a confidence that overrides doubt. It builds uh, an ability that overrides unknowing. So you don't need to know. What's that person doing? I don't know. Let's watch. Not, oh, he's doing this, he's doing that, and this is what's happening. That's what's happening. No, no, watch, just watch. We'll see for sure. Right? I mean, that that's how you help people. Right? You watch them go through their cycles, and then you go, oh, that's the spot right there. And they go, oh, you're triggering me. Yeah, right, because that's the spot. That's where the whole cycle started. That's where it launched. That's what keeps it going. Every time it comes in for a feed, you feed it and it goes around again. Yeah, of course, that's the sore spot. That's the real work, finding the sore spots, right? Being able to balance this out. And balance is, you know, it's interesting because once you have it, uh, that's joy. That is clarity. It, it puts you in a conscious place that I would like to call place beyond question there's no there's no there's no answers because you're in a place that's not you're not questioning anything you know you're connected to the universe the tree's not questioning anything so it's sitting there going geez i wonder if i'm gonna get up and move somewhere tomorrow oh i wonder if i'm gonna get killed tomorrow no 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 don't do any of that. that's the human capability to dream up all kinds of nasty shit it's going to happen to them. Right? Identifying, again, it's it's what this thing's identifying with. Right? And it really should only be identifying with what's causing its existence. What is causing it to be alive? Not what's draining its life. What is life affirming and giving? Not life sabotaging and destroying. Right, so you pull it back. Eventually, all of those identities, all those patterns, that really, if you if you were able to see them, those patterns, because they are they're basically patterns and cycles, but you see them inside of you know. So sometimes a person will just turn into an energy field. Right, it's like this mandala. Right? And then their body is like this projection coming out of it. And it's a complete replica of what this energetic configuration is. So like some people look old at some some days. It's like, hey, you look like aged 50 years last night. Well, if you look in the end, you, you see that projection of whether you look older today. Then you look at the mandala of energy, the energetic configuration this body is emanating out of. And you see the spot. It's out of symmetry. It's this little jagged. Yeah. It actually is an ugliness. It, it, it's like a distortion that it feels gross. Right? So that's what's playing through. Right? So those patterns embed themselves inside of that energetic configuration you call yourself. How do they do that? Well, the minute you have an identity and you put energy towards it, that's life force you're putting towards it. So you're basically giving life force to an energetic presence that is not you, a conglomeration of sorts, and smashing it in to the mandala energy field that you are that emanates the body. And it, it's an ugliness. It's a boundedness. It's a crushingness. It's a deep, like gravity that it, weight you can't escape right and it takes forever to find these 
Because you have to be aware that you're in a cycle that's going unconscious. It's like you ever had that where like three months go by, you wake up one morning, you realize you haven't been home. You have not been navigating your life for three months. You've just been in this cycle just going round and round. You know, the day you wake up to that, it's like, oh. it, for me, that's that's spooky. To, to wake up one morning, oh, shit, I haven't been conscious for days. It, it shows me that, wow, this is trickier than just... I have this concept and this 10-step program, and we're going to align your chakras, and you're going to be clear for the rest of your days. And then, you know, wow, you do that. And, I mean, way more work than doing that, and you can still get blindsided and not realize you've been unconscious, that you've been playing a pattern and you didn't even notice it. You made justifications for behavior, excuses for why certain things went bad, blaming people for the way you feel. Yeah, you're not going to notice that any of that you're doing. Because the patterns and cycles that are crippling you, you're doing them. They're not happening to you. But I was, I was beat up as a child. That's not happening now. Give yeah, it the program. Your consciousness is your responsibility. What you associate with, you're going to feel. There's just no way around that. So if poor me, poor me, poor me, poor me, poor me. Yeah, poor you. And you're going to feel that way. Right? And you may just indulge in that for so long because it brings you attention from people. So that way you don't have to generate your own because you can't because your identities have consumed it all. So now you need other people's attention. So you go to these states that mm, you can be home, but we need your friend right now. Right? Which just buries you. You're associating with a crippled being. Right? It's just an identity. It's identifying with it. The only thing your true presence identifies with is spirit. You can go along with it in a way you can participate with it within yourself or you can just let fate decide what happens to you you want the magical energy experience well you have to go to that state of consciousness for that to kick in are you waiting for it uh, you're in a cycle that cycles, there's no time. There's just infinity. Right? And it's very interesting in that place. Because people go, wow, you're really patient. No, I, I see the cycle. You clear out self-destructive cycles and you get to see how spirit works in the world. And it'll say, this needs to happen. And you go, yes. And that energetic presence of what that is activates inside of you. But it doesn't need to happen right away. It happens when spirit determines the time. You follow that. It's not like, oh God, this is never going to happen. I need to worry. No, you get to sit in a state of like, Perpetual, um, what would I say? Presence, which makes the time fly by. Like it, it, you were told it needed to happen yesterday, and it happened. It feels like today. So there isn't this gap in between that's full of anxiety and fear and doubt. There's a space between where all the creation happens, where you're just solid in it. You're clear in it, you're aware in it, you're watching the trajectory, you're taking the journey, you're walking with it, you're clearing out the identities to have more awareness towards where spirit's taking it so you can participate. And everything gets pretty cool, pretty fast. I mean, you know, it, all kinds of things can happen. You could lose 20 years off of yourself pretty fast. You could lose pounds off of you real fast. 
can lose bad habits, addictions and food and shopping and drugs. I mean, addictions to people. I mean, he can break all of this pretty easily. Right? I, if you're going to do it with an identity, it's going to take forever. Because the identity is always going to change the story, amend the story, rewrite the story. Uh, until it just is never going to stop. As long as you're looking for a way out without your participation, then you're just going to do that endlessly. But to purge the identities that are making you feel like you want to, and then when that energy comes back, you don't put it in anything. You give it back to the being. The being will take that reinvigorate itself because it's being been robbed by your identities for so long that it starts to reactivate. See, I, I used to say this thing, it's like, you know what your identity really does? What your mind and your identity are really doing? They're dragging your soul into a junkyard, chaining you to a Ford, and you can't get loose. And whenever it needs to do something, it just comes and beats the energy out of your soul and takes it and beats it and beats it and beats it until the soul just exudes the energy like we would blood. And then walks away, leaves it chained up, gives it a little water, a little food, a little appreciation. Here you go. Here's a towel to wipe your face. And then walks off and does the most disgusting things with life force. That's what I used to say. And I'm saying it now, so I guess I still say it. That's, that's how it's treated. So once the identity is broken, the cycle is broken. Once the mind has been extracted from it, so it's not this kind of director of all life force into this identity. And all of that life force is allowed to return to the being. It's almost like you, you understand that you've been beating the soul. And it's no longer um, conducive for you to do that. And that even the identity and the mind are suffering this beating now. Ask for forgiveness. Unchain the soul. And it just starts to naturally come back to its pristine state. So as you free yourself of the identities, the energy comes back to the soul. The soul then illuminates, becomes stronger deeply rooted in its presence, and then reaches up to connect with spirit. All on its own, much like a tree does, reaching for heaven. But there can be no identity there. So a lot of people say, oh, I want that life. No, you don't. No, no, you don't. No. You're not living that way. Everything's about identity. The identity is, is sensitive to everything. Right? To where the being can merge with all the energies without it going sideways. Because it has the direction from spirit. If spirit says, I need you to put this energetic into your configuration for the time being, it's not going to hurt you. But if you're like, I'm going to force this energetic in here to get what I want, that's going to destroy you. I hope I'm making sense. Because I'm sure there's plenty of good think it's a babbling idiot. But this is important. Consciousness is important. Life itself is important. You being able to participate in it, on a planet, in a body, in an infinite universe that's multidimensional, and you will experience that too. While you're here and while you're gone. That has to be valued. That is the most important thing. Not how many people like you. Not how much endorphins you can create. Not how much dopamine's going through you. Not how much serotonin is there. How much presence is there? That's sacred. That can navigate all of those things without talking about it. That can penetrate right through the physical realm into the spiritual realms like that. Without an identity. So, 
basically what I'm saying is you, if you want to rise in consciousness, your identity are the barriers. Your identities are the barriers you're going to have to break. Those are habits and cycles, whinings and trappings, complaints and refusals to act, fears and too much anxiety to get out of bed, depression because nobody loves me. All that's got to go. What was it treated good as a child? Yeah, so treat yourself better because you treat yourself worse than they did. Why? Well, they did that two years ago. You're doing it to yourself now and have been the whole time. So you're worse. It, yeah, I mean, I, it, this is hard work because there can't be any sympathy. Oh, poor you. No, none of that. All you're doing is reinforcing the identity. Oh, let me help you. Yeah, you're reinforcing an identity with your own identity. Stop all of that. If you don't know what this person's doing, don't say a damn word until something becomes clear to you. And then it, make sure it's your damn business in the first place. If they don't ask you for help, you don't. Just, oh, you know what you should do? This is what you should do. Yeah. Because that's an identity. If they want to go screw their lives up, that's fine. Let them. That means they're not done with their cycles yet. They're not done with their identities. They're still holding more of those more valuable than life itself. But we need to help those people. No, no, no. Life will help them when it's damn good and ready. In them, which is the only place they can be helped, is in here. You can't get into them. So there's no helping them. Not in that way. You have to be ruthless with identities because they're going to give you a thousand reasons to keep them and they're going to be relentless and they're going to keep you up at night and they're going to keep your mind chattering and churning. They're going to keep your relationships kind of distorted and weird. They're not going to stop. Especially when they come on and you just get into it and throw all your life force into this frustration around. You're more of this than what you say. At some point, you generate from within the peace that you've always been looking for. It's not a goal. It's the place you need to arrive so you can start living. You know, peace is not a goal in life. It's a place to start from. And if you haven't gotten to it yet, you haven't started living yet. You think you're alive. Yeah, everybody does. Well, but how alive are you? How much... Um, control you have over your own perception of things. You can just shift dimensions, go internally silent, watch the world in front of you just go literally. Because the minute you go quiet, loosen up the perception. Don't let the identity play with anything. The identity is not playing with anything. The mind goes quiet. Says, there's nothing there it needs to enforce for the identity. When that happens, that's why these um, things that life forms go through can be quite instantaneous. That it looks like it takes time, but it can be quite instantaneous. The minute the identity is dropped, which is what everybody was looking for. This deep satisfaction. 
floating around in infinite space, really dipped in all the dimension. Just surfing. Yeah. Right, following the creator through space time. Yeah. Cheering it on. Yeah, keep going. And you're just in its wake, just absorbing all that life force. Yeah. Just, wow. The last thing I want to do is go buy something made of plastic. A new phone. Yeah, 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 I won't have the effect that runs it when you take the real journey of unraveling identity, going back to consciousness. And one more little thing I got to say about this, and then we're done. If you have a question, put it there now, and I'll answer it now. Uh, most of you know I'm not good at commenting. Let's just so. <laughs> yeah, it's like. If you want to talk to me about it, then, you know, do your best to engage me. And I, I've made this change where if you ask for my help, I will at least have a conversation with you. But I ain't doing it in text. No, we'll have a conversation, either video, phone, or you come up here. Or if you live in a nice place, I want to visit over there. Right? Because I want to help. We don't really have much left to do. So, I mean, all I'm really doing is I'm cleaning up the forest that we have. 50 plus acres, Montana Sagrada. And there was a lot of dead wood here when we, when we got it, right? So it's, you know, the grass isn't growing well because there's just pine needles and wood on it. And then we were having work weekends where we invite people up to work. And of course, here at the house, we have work days, family work days where we just go out and do whatever project needs to be done. But I've basically just been cleaning up the forest, getting a massive amount of satisfaction out of that. Just dragging dead shit out. Cleaning up, you know, this far deep of pine needles so grass can actually grow. Like other plants can come up, not just a bunch of pine needles. I've been doing that. Um, and yeah, and, and this work. It's very fun. Right? So, I think the last thing I want to say about this is identities. What's perplexing is you have to have them. Okay, so I know this is going to, what? Just follow me. You have to have them. But you have to have them much like you have to wear pants in public. When you're at home, you can be as naked as you want to be. So, the identity is a suit. So if I have to go do a business meeting where, you know, there's some thing that needs to be done so this keeps happening. You know, what we're doing here. And that's true for everybody here. We all have to do a particular thing to keep this thing going. So it doesn't just fall into disarray and become just a place where people live and just do whatever they do. No, to keep the magic here. Some kind of inspiration. Right? So we have to engage certain kinds of entities in the world. Be them banks, uh, be them county assessors, um, county code enforcement, um, police officers when you get pulled over. You're going to put on a different uniform. There's going to be an identity that's going to engage that identity. If this is all in balance and in line, it will know, oh, I need to put this identity on to stay out of trouble here or to not be in danger. Boom, identity on. Boom. We are not the joys you are looking for. Once it's over, take the identity off, put it back in, in the closet. It's like a pair of pants. And if you wear a pair of pants too long, they, get, they stick to you and it's gross and it smells and it needs to be washed. Right? That's what identities are for. It's to be able to, to engage this world. Like uh, in Carlos talks of Don Juan, and I remember talking to him about it. I said, what was that like? I mean, how did you feel when Don Juan walked out of the room in a three-piece suit dressed like a businessman? He's like, I felt disgust, fear, and, and kind of um, excitement all at once. And I said, so he's like, yeah, it had to do with how I saw these things. 
But for Don Juan, it was nothing more than an identity that he needed to use. And he said that he looked as, as dapper as anyone could. It's just perfect. And how could it be perfect? Because it's the spirit donning the identity for that purpose. And it doesn't make mistakes. Don Juan, Carlos, the lineage that I was doing. I feel like raised in, I mean, I'm just going to say that, the one I was raised in, it happened when I was older, but it raised me. It's the spiritual world. It's the spiritual life where shedding identities and merging back with the higher states of consciousness. I'm getting to such a point where, oh my God, that higher state is populated. There's, there's like people there, in a sense. And they're all the people you miss and love and want to be around. The, the wise ones, the, where there's integrity in their relationship. There's integrity in the daily life. There isn't this fear and crap and competition going on. It's just solid peace. Everybody starts from a state of peace and grows their garden from there. So, these identities you have to use for your job or whatever. Use them. They're not you. Don't ever make them you. And how do you know if you're making, how do I know if I'm making my identity me? You're going to have emotional distortion, confusion, anxiety. Uh, if not dealt with, though, you'll have depression, thoughts of suicide, a Massive disconnect from life itself. Your only energy source will be the befuddled, totally confused identities you call friends. You bounce off each other and create uh, eventually chaos. That's where they live. They do. Any questions? No one? Was this clear? You, you understand what I'm saying? What I'm trying to allude to, be part of the be part of the process. All of us, I pay attention to what you're doing at your being. If you can do that, you change the game. Because you'll start to identify with, okay, this sucks. The minute you notice that sucks, you're going to start doing something about it. But if you're like, I don't know why I feel this way, why me? Yeah, you're not going to do anything about that. Nor could you, you don't know. So, really, the trick is to be honest with yourself. And I don't mean honest, oh, no. What's this? What's this going through? What's this feeling? Is it connected to everything and it feels at home? Or is it frightened? Is it feeling vindictive and mean and angry and wants to tear the world apart? Or is it like, hey, how can we um, bury this old shit and start growing on something new? How can we get with Earth and destroying this old world so a new one can rise up out of it? Mm -hmm. And you destroy your identity with it, and it falls apart. And then the real identity of what the Earth is will come forward. Anyway, that's it. That's all I got. A um, couple things. I did put up there at the beginning. If you can donate, um, you know, if you're able to and you want to, um, you can. We're going down to Peru next Monday. Um, we'll be down there in the village, uh, Onaria for you know a time, Santoria for a time, Bukapa for a time. And we always love to help those people down there because they put their money to good use. It's not to buy a watch or a new iPhone. It's to put a roof on the house or get the food or Make sure grandma's taken care of. You know, things done and that are necessary. So if you can donate, um, there's two places you can do that, Venmo, PayPal. If you use something else, let me know. I probably have it, but those are the two that most people use. So if you want to donate, uh, we'll take that down and hand it to them personally in the jungle. All right. Um, have a good night. Um, I'll probably do one of these from Pucalpa because I like to do them from Peru. It's kind of fun. Um, so, yeah, we may do that. Uh, see if maybe we can get Archer Mena to do another concert, and we'll broadcast that as well. Um, 
Montagna Sagrada, we're here. Uh, I know, you know, we were supposed to do a lot this summer. Uh, projects came up. We just want to get this place squared away, right? To have places for people to stay and, you know, so we're not all crammed in one house. We got a Maloka going up. It's basically a, a yurt, but it's a 40 foot Alaskan yurt. It's going to be wonderful. And Angela will decorate it, so it'll be awesome. So we'll be in Peru until um, mid July. And then, but starting in August, August, September, October, which is really nice here anyway. It's a nice time here. We'll get really busy here. We'll accept visitors. Um, but there's going to be, we need to know what that looks like. So if you want to come up here, you, you need to let us know, like, what, what does that entail for you? What is, what is it you're wanting to do while you're here? Because if it's just sit here and do, you know, just kind of hang out, yeah, we're too busy. But if it's like, hey, well, I want to do this, maybe you do some of that, and, you know, you give us an idea of what it is you're wanting to come up here for, we will more than accommodate you. Okay? And, you know, we'll figure out what the exchange is because we got to keep this place going. This is important. Love you guys. Have a good night. Don't hurt yourselves. Don't disturb yourself with dark imaginings. Train that imagination to be your buddy. Give yourself, you know, a little slack. Tell your identity to fuck off. <laughs> Love you. Have a good night. There, I got it.